Hey, 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 what is going on, IK fam, BN? I'm back again today for another dope Sauce Infinity Kingdom video. Now, today we're going to be talking about wind and the different March tier compositions that you can run along with Dragon Order and give you some nice inside tips. Starting off, we're going to be talking about our early free-to-play build with wind and who you should be running. The recommendation here, pretty straightforward. It's going to be Arminius for your frontline shieldman. Complementing with Mulan, who is going to be running Cav, so you at least get the nice benefit of having a two-unit difference for your front line, not having to double up. We know how that double Cav can ruin people's hearts and souls. Next on the back line is going to be Montezuma, which is right her. He's going to be your back line support, complemented with Robin Hood. Right, This is going to make out your early free-to-play comp. Now let's talk about late game free-to-play comp. Montezuma will be staying. You will be adding on Hannibal Barca, which will be not there, uh, right here for Shieldman. And then you'll also add in King Arthur, which is right here, right, Cav. So you still have the nice double unit or the two unit difference on the front line. And then lastly, you're going to be working in Ken Emperor. Now, Ken Emperor is still pretty easy to attain. You just have to wait. Now, where do you get Ken Emperor from? Well, you can get him from Season 4 and Season 5 Arena from the Insignia Shop here in the bottom right-hand corner. Now, I'm in Season 3, but next season, when the shop refreshes again in here about 8 days, you'll be able to see him pop up here in 7-4. So the trick is, it's 200 Insignia points per one shard, right? You times that by 10, you get 2,000. You multiply this by 6, you get 60. That's the minimum. That means you need to have 12,000 Arena Insignia Shards, whether it be for se within Season 4 or before Season 5 ends, right, in order to get, uh, excuse me, in order to get Ken Emperor, right? Now, the seasons run, I want to say it's 30 days, if I can actually remember and count correctly. In that case, you would probably be able to get Ken Emperor, right, by the time, what, 30, 34, like, what, nine, day 91 of your server. Or I guess I should say your new server, uh, right? And then you'd be able to kind of complete your late game win comp that way, right? Hopefully, unless they don't change the timings. Uh, and again, that'll make out your late free to play. Now, the late pay to win comp really only sees up to two differences here. The first one is going to be that you're probably going to work in Baldwin into your comp, right? Now keep in mind with Baldwin, right? You're gonna pay $99.99 if you wanna unlock him or just do the bare minimum unlock uh, before he starts showing up in market, right? You'll still keep Ken Emperor, you'll keep Hannibal Barca, and then it's really just a decision on whether you wanna run King Arthur here or if you wanna run Saladin. Now Saladin, you can only get from daily deals Oh man, it would not be a solid video without a quality yawn. So, right, this is where, um, and excuse me, you could also get Saladin from the wheel event coming in either 30 or 5 shards. Otherwise, you would go here to, I think it's here, and then where's Daily Deals? So yes, Daily Deals, Redeem, right, you'll see Saladin is right here. So if you haven't done... If you haven't unlocked him yet, and let's say you haven't done this Epic Immortals chest, as usual, you could spend the six bucks, you get the unlock for Saladin. If you've already used this, then you're going to have to spend 18 to then get enough points to then get Saladin uh, if you've already used that Epic Immortals chest. So just something to keep in mind. Now, whether or not you use King Arthur, which King Arthur is more of a kind of damage over time, small AoE, and reflect Immortal, Right, and we'll go off of this by reading his skill. It says reduces all damage you receive by 24.5%. It goes up to 35 and has a 60% chance of reflecting 35, which goes up to 50% of damage back on the attacker for six seconds. That means for the six second duration, right, you get all of those plus the reflect uh, for anyone that attacks King Arthur for that time. And when you look at Saladin, Saladin is more of just like a big, a bigger AOE guy. Right, so inflicts physical damage, damage rate is 45%, it goes up to 150% per hit, three times to all targets, right? So he'll do three attacks at 150%, right, which doesn't necessarily scale to 450%, right? It's more of he's hitting for 150% each time. 
Man, two yawns going wild here today in this video. So I think for the most part, I think unless you need more overall AOE damage, depending on the matchup, right? If you're facing more of a kind of squishier build, probably wouldn't be Earth. You might consider going Saladin. Otherwise, I'm actually a little bit more of a fan, I think, of King Arthur. As far as if you're just looking for someone default to run. One, I like the reduction of damage. Um, I like the fact that it has a chance to reflect. And if it reflects, and again, 60% chance, right? That's for anyone that attacks you. You know, what happens if you get eight attacks or if you get four to eight attacks during that period, right? I think 60% chance gives you at least half of those attacks, right? Where at least half of the damage that's being done to you is being reflected back. So you're getting free damage. Now, is that going to add up to the potential AOE damage that Saladin would be doing? I, I could make the argument that at the higher levels where the attack or the uh, auto attacks are a lot more, along with King Arthur taking more of a damage reduction uh, as far as during that time as well could be more impactful. Again, I think it's going to be more of a gut call on the matchups that you're going with, but I like King Arthur, I think, running default compared to Saladin just for a few of those reasons. Now let's talk about the Dragon Skill Order. So Dragon Skill Order is a little different. I like the Wind Dragon because I think the Wind Dragon, my approach would be kind of leveling the skills one at a time compared to some of the other dragons where, you know, we've said, you know, just max one of these skills and then work on the next one, max that, then max the next. I like Wind Dragon because of the way that the skills are set up, with the first one being Turmoil Breath. It inflicts true damage every six seconds on enemies within the area and reduces their accuracy by 25% for 12 seconds. Stormy Breath, when three of your random allied troops land a normal attack, they have a 50% chance of recovering a certain amount of HP. Then we get to Squall Howling. In battle, your mortals get crit and dodge rate. In addition, when the mortals get nor uh, additional normal attack damage, right? This goes up 25%, decent amount. Now, the third skill here isn't a prerequisite, does not have a prerequisite attached to it in order to proc, right? It's just pretty much a passive at this point. And so I think because of this, the skill order I like for wind is one for turmoil breath. I like three because you get already the passive crit, dodge, and damage. And then lastly, I like two, right, which is Stormy Breath. So my recommendation here would be level these each one level at a time, but go in the order of one, three, two. That'd be my recommendation. Now, that pretty much is going to be it for me on going through the Wind Dragon comps, right? Look out for a future video where we will be talking about the skills that we recommend for each element after we just got done kind of doing our introduction to basics in the Tower of Knowledge. And as usual, I would love to hear what any of you think as far as the comp recommendation, recommendations based on the tiers, along with, right, have you found the, a different dragon skill order that you like? And let me know why. Uh, because I think the interesting thing is there's a lot of different players, a lot of people, uh, there are a good amount of people that are, do run wind, and I'm sure have done some trial and error and testing, right? And I'd love to hear from you guys on how you go about doing your dragon skill ups. Again, let me know all of that and more in the comments below. That's it for me today. Until next time, we'll catch y'all later.